Hey everybody, this is James and in today's video we're going to take a look at how to create 2D top-down movement, shooting and most importantly making your character look at wherever your mouse is on the screen as you move around. So let's dive in, let's take a look at how we can make all of this that you're seeing right now work. Okay, I've got a mostly empty project file here with a few basic elements added in. If you want to follow along with the project files that I'm using here, you can get them in the description down below. There's nothing too crazy going on. Uh, all we've got set up is a little bit of a background area with a tile map for where our player can move and another player with a little circle and a triangle just to represent them. And we have the triangle pointing to the right and pointing to the right is going to be important uh, as we start making this guy rotate around. So we want to make him move. We want to make him point at our mouse and we want to shoot so let's get him moving first of all so let's create a folder here for scripts and then in here we're going to right click and create a c sharp script that i'm going to call player controller pretty simple and i'm going to open this up and with this open up here i'm just going to pop back in and now that the script is compiled for the first time i'm going to attach it onto my player here uh, my player also has a circle collider attached to it to give us some physical presence in the world and we're also going to use the rigid body system to allow us to control physics so i'm going to add a rigid body 2d so now it's a physics object if i played the game right now it would fall down and because we made it have a collider it'll collide with the walls of our little area here so i'm just going to stop that let's turn off gravity so we'll set gravity scale to zero and I'm also going to go to constraints here and I'm going to freeze the rotation so it doesn't start rotating wildly out of control when we don't want it to. Okay, so let's go back to the script and we're going to create a reference to that rigid body. So public rigid body 2D the RB. And then we're also going to add a public float value for move speed. So that's going to be how fast we make our little dude move. And then this is going to be as simple as we can possibly make it for moving this little guy around because we can go through our rigid body and directly affect the speed that it's moving, which is the rigid body dot velocity. And I'm going to set that to be a new vector two because the velocity is an X and a Y value. So a vector two is an X and a Y. And on the X axis is going to be whatever input dot get axis horizontal is. So that'll be on your keyboard, your A or D key, or your left or right arrows, or on a controller, it'll be the left stick. And on the Y axis, well, the, the left stick sideways. And on the Y axis, we're gonna say input, again, dot get axis, vertical. So that's gonna be our up and down. So that'll be up and down arrows on your keyboard, or W and S uh, on a kind of European slash US, oh, not European, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a US style keyboard uh, and on a controller of course it'll be the up and down on the uh, left analog stick so we're going to take that entire input and we're going to multiply that by our move speed because our input axis will get us a value between zero or sorry between minus one and one on both uh, directions and then we multiply that by however much speed we want to have save this and jump back in here and now if I go to my player controller, I'm going to set the move speed to eight. I'm going to assign the rigid body to that slot and press play here. And we've got our little guy moving around. And because it's a rigid body, it collides with the walls around us. So we can't escape this little area that we're in. Okay, so that's great. But of course, if I move my mouse around, this guy is not doing anything. We want to make him look at where our player is or where our mouse is. So let's go back into our script and we're going to add a very simple bit of code. All we have to do is we're going to keep track of where our mouse cursor is on our screen at the moment. And then we're going to keep track of where our actual player is on the screen. So where this thing is on the screen and the difference between them, we use a special little formula to uh, work out which rotation we should have. So let's step through that. So I'm going to create a vector two, first of all, that we're going to call mouse pause so mouse position and that's going to be equal to whatever the input dot mouse position is then i'm going to create a vector two again called screen position and it's going to be wherever we are on the screen right now and the way we can get that is by looking at camera dot main so that gets us the current main active camera in our scene so that's guy that guy over here and we'll say world to screen point. 
So world of screen point basically takes an object for wherever it is in the world and puts it into pixel coordinates on the screen. So right now this guy is in the middle of the screen. So that'll be, because this is a 1080p resolution thing, 1080 is the height of it. So it'll be half the height of it. So 1080 divided by 2, 540. And then on the x-axis, it'll be uh, 1920 divided by half. So that'll be 960. So it'll be right in the middle, right there. That'll tell us where our little guy is in pixel coordinates on the screen. So I'm going to take that, so the world screen point, and what I'm actually wanting to get that is, is our current transform dot position. So that's how we'll know. The thing we want to find where it is on the screen is our object that we're attached to right now. And then we'll calculate another vector too, called mouse distance. And this is going to be how far away the mouse is from our player, essentially. So that'll just be calculated by saying whatever our current mouse position is, take away the screen position. So a quick way to just kind of illustrate that is imagine that our we've got two points. This is where the player is and this is where the mouse is. And we'll say our player is at 1-1 one, one, and our mouse is at say position 5-4. How do we know the distance between them? Well that's 4 on the x-axis and 3 on the y-axis. You could quickly work it out. And how you work that out is by saying take the object we want to look at, which is our mouse pointer, take the 5 of that, take away the 1, that gets us 4, take the 4 of it with the y value, take away the 1 here, so 4 minus 1, let's just do that, uh, 4 minus 1 is, of course, 3. So 4, 3 is the distance between them. And essentially that's what we're calculating here. The, it gives us the relative position of the mouse to where we currently are. And then, very simply, we're going to calculate the angle that our rotation should be to, to look at that distance that we're looking at here. And all we do here is use a function called mathf.atan2. If I hover over it, it turns the angle in radians whose tan is y slash x. We don't really need to understand it. Honestly, this is just a formula that I know you use this to calculate the rotation of your little body here. If you don't understand the maths behind it, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter. All that matters is you know how to use it in the right situation. So all we do is pass in the two values of our mouse distance, but we pass them in backwards. So you can see here we put in a y value and an x value. So here we're going to say whatever our mouse distance that we calculated is dot y and then the mouse distance dot x. And that's going to give us a, if we hover over this, it's going to return a float value, which is actually a angle in radians. So radians are uh, kind of decimal values, essentially. We don't want to do that. We actually want it in a degree value, so between 0 and 360, so we know which angle we should have. And we can just calculate that very simply by multiplying this result by mathf dot radians 2 degrees, so rad 2 deg. And that'll give us the angle that we want to have. So then I'm going to go down here and finally I'm going to say our transform dot rotation <coughs> should be equal to, we want to rot rotate our little guy around. If I go to my player here and if I rotate it on the Z axis, you can see that's what makes it rotate around down here. So I'm going to put that back to zero and that's the rotation we want to use. So I'm going to say the rot rotation of our player controller should be quaternion dot Euler. So quaternions are the values that our transform rotations have. We use dot Euler so we can convert it to a simple uh, vector tree value. And we're going to say the x is 0, the y is 0, and as we saw, the z is what we want to change. So we're going to use the z angle as the z value. Okay, I'm going to save, and then let's jump back in here. That's compiled, perfect. And now I'm going to play, and we should see a little guy now look to wherever we are and as we move around it'll follow the mouse so if I just keep the mouse in the same position he'll always look towards the mouse as we go so perfect we've now got movement we've got looking at the cursor last thing we need is a way to shoot some bullets so I'm gonna stop this here and if I'm gonna shoot some bullets I obviously need some bullets to shoot so let's set up a very simple empty object here which is a bullet I'm going to create a circle as a child of this so 2d sprite circle that's fine. Then I'm going to move this entire bullet over to the side just so I can see it a bit better. 
then I'm going to, much like I did for my player, I'm going to keep this nice and simple. So I'm going to add a rigid body to this guy. Turn off gravity. Then I'm going to shrink this circle thing here. I'm going to turn on scale them all and sink down to actually 0.2. There we go. Yeah. And let's add a circle collider to this as well. So circle collider 2D with a radius of 0.1. So it fits in nicely. If I zoom in, uh, if I uh, let's hide the circle here, you can see then the radius of the collider is the correct size. Boop, turn that back on. Then let's add a very simple script for this guy. So much like our player, let me just zoom out here. Our player is facing to the right. We're also going to make our bullets by default move to the right. And then they're going, when when they get spawned in, they'll match the rotation of our player. So then as far as they're concerned, right will be always the direction, the same as what the player is facing when they're spawned. So then they'll always move in that direction. So let's go into our folder here, create a C sharp script for bullets. Pretty simple. We're going to open this guy up. Add a couple of variables. We'll add a public float for move speed. We'll add a public rigid body 2D BRB. And then in our update, we're just going to make sure the velocity of our rigid body is whatever our transform right is. So that's moving to the right multiplied by our move speed. Okay, let's save that. Let's just go back in here to make sure this is working correctly. Zoom out, bullet. Let's set the speed of this. Oh, well, I suppose we better attach it to our object. That's the speed of it to be 12, so faster than the player moves. Put our rigid body in there. Now, when I play, you'll see the bullet fly off to the side. That's great. Only problem is, of course, once it's flying off to the side, it will uh, just kind of stay there. It's off on the outside here. It's actually trapped in between the edges here, which is perfectly fine. We don't want it to do that though. We want it to be destroyed when it hits the wall. So let's go back into our script. We're going to call the on collision enter 2D function. And we're going to say destroy this game object. And also when it's destroyed, let's create a little impact effect. So we're going to have a public game object impact effect just to make it look a bit nicer. And so when we destroy the game object, we're going to instantiate. So copy in the impact effect and where it should go is wherever our bullet currently is. And it just have it's a blank quaternion.identity, no rotation applied to it. So I'm just going to save that. Let's go back in here then. Uh, so we need to have something for the impact effect. Handily in the files, we have a little prefab impact effect here. I'm just going to pop that in there, save us creating a particle effect. It's a pretty simple little one here. You'll see it in action now. When I play the game and the bullet flies off to the right, poof, it creates a nice little explosion. Okay, so we've got a bullet. Now we need to fire it. Let's go back to our player controller script in here. We're going to need a couple of things here. Where is our shots going to fire from? So we're going to have a public transform that we're going to add in called firepoint. We're going to have, what are we firing? Well, that's going to be a public game object, which is our bullet. How long it's going to take between shots is going to be a public float time between shots. And then a private float shot counter is going to keep track of how often our shots are firing. So how are we going to fire our shots? Well, we're going to do it as long as we're holding down the left mouse button. How we can do that is do a check and see if input dot get mouse button zero so zero is the left click on the mouse so we're saying get mouse button is the mouse button currently being pressed down if it is let's make our shot counter count down so shot counter minus equals time dot delta time then we check and see okay is our shot counter less than or equals to zero so has it counted down to zero essentially or is it gone just slightly below zero and then we'll say, OK, if it is, then reset our shot counter. So set it back to be our time between shots. And then instantiate a new copy of the bullet at our fire point position. Fire point dot position. And the really important part is we need to apply the rotation of our player to the bullet that we copy in. So if our player has rotated to look upwards, our bullet should also be looking upwards. Therefore, the transform that right movement of it will make it shoot in. in.
<coughs> we'll make it shoot in that direction. So we're going to say here fire point dot rotation. Now we could use transform dot rotation equally, but we'll use fire point dot rotation just to make it sensible. The fire point is obviously going to uh, inherit the rotation of the player because it's going to be a child of the player. So let's save all of that. Very simple and straightforward. And we're going to dive back in here. We're going to let this compile. Oh, it already has compiled apparently. And we're going to go to our player and we're going to first of all create a empty called fire point. We're going to go to our player, pop that fire point in there. We're going to grab our bullet. So we want to make our bullet a prefab. So I'm going to go to my prefabs folder, pop the bullet in there so we can make copies of it, then delete it from our scene. Grab our bullet, pop it on there. How fast are we going to shoot? Let's say 0.1. So we should be firing 10 bullets a second. And now when I play the game, we should see. Oh, one issue there is I put the fire point right inside the body. I forgot to move the fire point. So basically what's happened is the bullet is colliding with the player straight away and destroying itself. So let's put the fire point at the end here. So it's no longer hitting the collider of the player. And now when I fire, boo, 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 boo. now we get shots firing all over the place. And uh, actually, let's make those bullets be a bit faster. Let's go back to our bullets here. 15, I think, might actually be better. Play again. There we go. That feels a bit nicer. So now, that's basically it. We've now got full top-down movement. you got the ability to fire wherever your cursor is at at the moment. And you can do whatever you want from here you've got a basic game set up you can start doing whatever you want you can have spawning enemies you can have all these kind of fun things going on that you want to have going on but there you go the basics of setting up movement shooting and looking at the mouse in a top-down shooter type game thanks for watching this video i'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness don't forget to hit the likes the subscribes all that fun stuff and i'll see you all very soon